Hey, g'day guys, it's the Glevo King here. I'm just gonna do what I think will be a quick video, hopefully, for you guys. I'm gonna show you how to change a rear main seal. This is a 351 Cleveland that I'm going through for a friend of mine. I built a 393 for. He wants to sell this. It was a good running engine that came out of his car. And uh, I just thought it's not really worth selling the engine as it was. It had a few oil leaks, so for a favour, because I like to go above and beyond, I'm going to go through this motor and tidy it up for him. But today we're doing the rear main. First thing you need to do is get an Imperial socket 1316. Come back here to the mains. This is only a two bolt Cleveland. You've got to crack them loose. Lock the engine stand in. One. Right, they came loose pretty good. Um, well, actually, probably a bit too loose. doing the bolts quickly guys so I've got a little trick the reason I haven't taken that out I knocked out but you can actually use the two original bolts to lever the cap off if you're lucky in most cases if you grab them you can gently use the two bolts like that to pull it off let's have a look at this bearing guys this engine here right has a bit of a funny story this engine it's 1010 it's a 351 crank. This is an unusual crank. It's an Australian black crank, what we refer to as a steel crank. It's a long rod combination, which means it's got 302 Cleveland 6 inch con rods with an ACL flat top piston with an offset height gudgeon pin. It's a pretty cool engine. Something I'd normally be interested in, but <laughs> you guys will come to know I've got a collection of my own, but I'm very humble. I don't like to brag. What we're doing here, we're going to replace this seal. Someone has changed it, it's not a rope seal, but it... <sighs> yeah, well, someone. <laughs> this engine was assembled in 1998 by Mick Webb. Came out of an XB coupe that's only done about 25,000 kilometers, my mate said. He's come up from Melbourne. It's an absolutely beautiful car, and I built him a 393 Stroker with aluminium heads. Just an AFD 2V combo, 600 horsepower, one of my groove and combos. All right. That bearing's in really nice condition. What we will do, this one will come out really easy, so I'll just put this aside and we'll come back. I'll show you guys how to remove the uh, rear main that's in the block, which is pretty easy. So, I'll put, set this aside. Give my hands a quick wipe. Sorry, guys. No, look, I don't know. Uh, I'm not the. I'm not claiming to be the best engine builder or anything. I've worked on a lot of Clevos. This is just my few tips here. I will do a video one day if you guys give me enough likes. If I get over 250 likes on the video, it doesn't matter how many years it takes. I'll do a rear main in the car and I'll show you my secrets, how to do it. That will save you a lot of time. It's not the sort of thing I just want to do as a first video. But anyway, what we will do now. We'll swap the socket over from a 13-16 for the main cap bolt to a 15-16 for the hardware bolt. If you could just give me a hand here, brother, later. G'day guys. Right, so what we're going to do here, because this isn't a rope seal. If it was a rope seal, you would need one of these guys to screw into it. And you would rotate the crank over at the same time, gently pulling it out. And you start that in the end of the tyre so that you can centre it basically like opening a bottle of wine basically what we've got to do with this one because it's a rubber aftermarket one that has a steel lip in there we'll use a punch I'm just going to use the back side of the file here and I'll just put it on the seal there and now if they leak they come out easy if they were dry they won't come out easy now this one's coming out very very easy okay so seconds I'll come around over here we should be able to grab the seal the harmonic balance of bolts and rotate the crank at the same time as the seal and pull that out now yeah it was leaking see you guys 
it was in the right way, it was just warm. If I had have left this in there, it would have caused the next guy a bit of an issue. It's really good to see bearings in that condition. Someone's going to be getting a bargain when I put this back together. A little bit of backstory on this engine, it's got a set of yellow terror heads on it. It had a towing cam in there, I'm taking that out, I'm putting in a Pro Stage 3. Something more to, suitable for like a Falcon, that'll be zero maintenance, no roller rockers. It's going to have JD timing gear set. It'll be a pretty nice engine when it's finished off. Edelbrock performer intake and a uh, yeah, 750 uh, Vaxa Garby for a few other goodies. Anyway, we'll move on with what I'm going to do now. I'm not going to show this part, but I'll explain it to you as quickly. We'll set the seal aside. I've been working on engines for a while. There's really only one thing that you want to use to clean any surfaces of a block where there's gasket material and that is a good clean scourer this scourer pad's from a local business a construction business nearby they sell it in a big sheet i like to support local businesses if i can it's a really good thing i also like to use a lot of australian components in the engines if i can just to support some local companies not even local interstate it's just a good thing to get on board and to help everyone out you know being a small time guy myself, if, if I didn't have a couple of like loyal guys that were behind me, I wouldn't really get anywhere, so it really means a lot to some of the small companies. Anyway, what do you do? Look, I will just show you as quickly. I used to use the Greaser, I used to use Enox, Lanox, all different things, all engine builders have told me over the years, buddies, mates, people that I've become friends with. That's just a breaker bar, don't stress, it's not a ratchet. With this WD, it is water-based, so it's not going to stay on there, but it'll actually, if you use enough of it liberally, you will actually get underneath the grease, you'll get underneath the silicon, and with very, very minimal effort, and without destroying your hands, I should be wearing gloves, but the block looks pretty clean. I actually thought this would be immaculate under here, but a little bit of sealant. Didn't spray these sides, guys. Don't do anything dry. This isn't my engine room, it's just my laundry. This is a favor I'm doing for a guy. Normally I'd be doing this sort of work like under a car or in somebody's shed or on the lawn at the house or something helping Let's just have out. a quick look at how it looks already, just in that little short time. Oh, beautiful. A little bit more and it'd be perfect. Look at that. Just a quick hit. There's a couple of bits here. Look, I haven't got much of a nail, but nail's really handy. It's not easy working on engines. A lot of people think that it's like all uh, sitting back behind the computer and that it's actually getting your hands dirty. Not everyone's got the budget to work on a new engine either. 80% maybe of my work is cleaning up stuff like this for guys. Helping them with performance budget stuff. I'm quite happy with that guys. What I'm going to do is roll the engine over and I'm going to clean this lip seal. So I'll stop the video, we'll spin the crank around, you want this to be absolutely perfect and this edge here, I'll clean up the main, then I'll get the main cut back over here and I'm going to show you a couple of little pointers and we'll keep the video going. Thanks guys, tune back in in a minute. Something I didn't mention before and you have probably noticed, I always wear glasses. My uh, tinted sunnies are actually safety glasses Polaroid and these are the ones I wear at home clear because the lighting's a bit poor here this afternoon till it gets dark but I'll show you what I do just up UD40 and basically any kitchen scourer but the bigger the better you can get the sheets here you've got more to use and I like this one's actually fine out of the stuff they call it's fine Scotch Guard, whatever 3M it's all the different brands do the same thing nice little coating of WD on there I'll set that out of the way come in quickly with this Give it a nice polish just to get it back absolutely perfect on that lip and break away any seal that's stuck on that bevel. 
Right, now what I'll do is I'll gently roll the crank over to reveal the dirty part. Go a little bit further and I'll do it in three stages. They're here. I'll get in because a lot of rubber suck on these uh, little 45 degree uh, sort of half cross hatch that's here. It's very interesting when you buy a stroker cranks it. The reason you need to run the one piece rear main seal is because they can't do this one little finish here. Such a simple thing. <laughs> these hundreds, thousands, millions of these cranks. Anyway, sorry guys, I don't want to bore you with the information. He's probably, he's probably going to be sick of me after a while. I've got a lot of stuff that I know about Cleveland. I'm always learning more. I actually met a few interesting people from, uh, from one of the American groups. They've taught me and showed me a few things too. When I say taught me a few things, I mean showed me some Ford racing gear that I had no idea existed that we would never find down here. I'm a pretty easy going guy if anyone ever wants to uh, shoot me a message or have a bit of a chat too. I'm generally pretty busy but I've always got the time to apply to people. Right, we clean that seal up. I'm not just cleaning this edge, I'm cleaning this back edge here too. Just so it's all clean. Right, we'll ditch that, I'll get the rag, give it a little quick wipe down. Before I put this uh, gut back on here, I'm going to give it a, a degreaser to get rid of any of this WD and I'm going to um, put a bit of my engine braking loop here and on the bearing and on the cap and well, look, I'll show you what I'll do. Let's move on to the next step. This is all clean. Now I've got to get the main cap. Take the bolts out, set them aside. Nice WD. Nice WD here. So scotch guard. You can use a vice if you want. If you've got half decent shrink in your hands, you can just hold on to stuff like this, it's pretty easy. Just just cleaning this mating area for now, even though the seal's not moved. And this one There, yep, it's off. And there. There. Okay, break. Now, right here, right here. 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 Right Very important step here, I do not want to miss is the original main caps. This engine's been rebuilt, worked over, it's quite a powerful engine actually. The original main caps have a pin through here, which you'll probably just be able to see if I open this a quick It's 43 degrees here in Queensland today, 43 degrees Celsius. I feel a bit silly for trying to attempt to show you guys this. I should have just done it at my own measure. But uh, hopefully everyone learned something. I'm going to try and show a little bit more than... A little bit more than I could seem to find some years back when I was doing this job for the first time. Just getting rid of all the silicon out of here. And what we want to look for is where that pinhole is, which I, it looks like the pin's missing or someone's already deleted it, which is good. If you leave that pin there, it obtrudes on this side and on this side. When you go to push the new seal in, you will actually split it. 
So you either bust it with a chisel and leave it, which is my preferred method, with a cold chisel and shear it so that there's not a hole there, or some people get a little pin and a scrub and they'll just knock it out. This one's not in the way, so there's a little bit of silicon there. This one's actually ready to go. So I'll have to do the video again one day at some point. Or next time I work on an engine where I'm doing this, I'll, uh, I'll just quickly film it to show you guys how easy that little step is. It's not hard. Now I'm very happy to see the bearing in such good condition. If this was a race engine, never open up a bearing on a race engine and expect to put it back together. Race engines are done differently, they don't work like that. If you're working on a race engine and doing anything that involves opening it up and undoing a rod or a main cap, you don't put it back together. Things wear in a certain way, race engines are done a certain way with more loose, more tolerance. This is a pretty nice engine, it's got a bit of power, it's a medium build. I'm confident because I've opened a lot of motors up that I'll be able to put this back and this engine will work better than it was when I had it, when I got it. And uh, that's why I'm doing this and showing you what to do today. But uh, if this was like some big horsepower thing and it had a stroker crank in there and you had a leaking rear main seal, chances are you actually need to pull it all down completely and machine the block and fit a one piece rear main. This video I'm doing here today is for stock 302, stock 351 crank assembly. I'm a big fan of the stock 351 shrug, it's high RPM. I really push them to the absolute limits, especially some of these budget stuff like this, it's quite fun. Anyway, we'll move on. Just wanted to have that little bit of a uh, pre-warning there. I don't want any guys to pull apart a $25,000, $30,000 engine and be watching this video here and expecting to learn anything. This is for stock stuff to, to mid 400 horsepower level. If you've got anything more than that, you're going to have to keep tuned on my page and I'll, I will talk about that sort of stuff later, but be some time before I work on my engines and not everyone can afford to play with that sort of horsepower. Anyway, uh, what we will do, we'll set this here on the rag and it'll be safe for a minute. Okay, here's the, uh, here's the new rear main seal. I like to use Falpro gaskets. This is from a Falpro Cleveland full gasket set. So what I'm going to do, my hands are too dirty, I have a little lesson here, see this, no good, wash your hands, keep your hands clean, keep your area clean, keep your cap clean, everything needs to be clean. Okay, good day guys, I've done all of that time for the roof, everything else there with the dirty hands and all of that, now my hands are clean, get the new rear main seal, two piece, fail pro, we're only going to want one half for now. We'll open it up. Now, something quite important to say about this is the seal has a uh, bevel on it. This bevel with this edge has to go back into the motor to act as a reflection so that when the crank's spinning that there's like a vacuum it'll actually blow the oil away from the seal. If people put it in like that it's not going to work. It's going to pass oil. It'll be a new seal so just Ooh, basically always that way there used to be other seals available that were different without that channel but I'm talking fail pro I mean 95% of guys are going to be using these this is a little product here I like to use I got from the boys at PW some time ago driven engine assembly lube this one's a bit different to everything else it's a uh, oil soluble it's, really, it's a really nice product I like it works really good Now we're just looping up the, uh, the seal on the end where we're going to start winding it into the block here. And uh, we'll just get that registered right. We'll start it here. And what you can do sometimes is um, just push them in gently by hand, these new style ones. With the old rope ones, absolutely no go. I've got a bit of a feel for it. Just gonna go gently, gently, gently. Okay, that's about where, where I don't wanna go too much more. There's plenty of lube on there. What we'll do now is start to turn the crank while I hold the end of this seal positively engaged. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Combining the traction of the, the traction of the crank and a bit of force if you can apply any. I think the two will make do. You might have to re-lube it. Get any in there? Mm -hmm. It's going. Just being gentle. Okay, get over it. Right. 
very dark there, but it didn't sound like yeah, you want to get it a bit lower. A bit lower, but not much lower. There, wait. Okay, a lot of that lube came off there. Okay, you always want to leave it offset. About, I like to go an eighth of an inch, some guys say three eighths of an inch. That there feels to me about two eighths. We'll leave that. So what I've got to do now, right, because you have to lube that end to get it started. You can't just put sealant or silicon straight on there. It's not going to work. You don't really want to put any sort of a chemical on there to clean it. But what I like to do is just get a um, can of the greaser. Right here. Very hot day today guys, it's 42 degrees, I'm standing here doing absolutely nothing, just holding the camera. <laughs> I helped him turn the engine then, but I'm absolutely sweating. Good on you guys. That red corner of the rag and you want to get it in there, you want to try and you don't want it to get too much solvent in there, it's going to end up actually damaging the seal. You want to get that oil soluble breaking loop, which is why I use that, if you use oil you will never get it back off of the thing. You can actually clean the end of this. Okay, now this end here that's dry, we're going to keep going around and we'll try and get it down into the block a little bit more. And we'll get this other end up just a little bit higher. Let me get the seal edge. Yep, now a little bit more, a little bit more. How's it coming there? Yep, that's it. Probably a bit far, but that'll be fine. You just want it offset. Okay, now we'll give this a quick wipe down again. Now the block's clean in that corner. Again, there's no oil, nothing there, no contaminants. And now the end of the seal where we're going to put sealant is actually going to work because it's going to be clean rubber. Any oil or anything on there. Another little tip. You've got to clean these bolts right up and the threads, chase them, clean them and uh, I like to put a little bit of medium thread blocker on there just because they're an original fastener, not fine thread or anything. They should be uh, always pretty much good to reuse as long as you don't find any damage on them or anything. What we're going to do, we've put the, uh, we've put the seal into the block. We've cleaned the we've cleaned the block surface just before the seal came out. Not with too much degreaser or fuel, whatever you want to use, brake cleaner, because it's rubber, it'll wreck it. So on the rag, and you let the rag dry for a bit. I just showed you a few. There's quite a few secrets here. Critique me all you want. If anyone's got a better way of doing it, I'm actually keen to see because I've been doing it for a while and I'm just trying to help everyone out. It's not really a competition or anything, you know. I'm just sharing advice. But uh, anyway. What to do, you've got to get a bit of this loop here, breaking loop, my hands are clean once again, and you want to, um, because this one's going to be coming in on the block, we'll just loop that now, that'll be fine, and I want to loop this bearing area, which I've wiped up, with a nice, nice coating of loop, everywhere all around, it's nice and clean, I'm going to grab the main cap down here, which I've also given a really good clean down, and I'm going to, uh, Give this a nice, uh, nice coating of breaking loop here too. The other half of the seal. If you put your seal in, it ends up ridiculously long. Then you measure it. I don't know. Very rarely with a felt seal, you might have to cut a bit off of the end, but I doubt it. Yeah. What catches everyone out? Don't get confused with your registration. Put your cap on, eyeball it, have a look. Go, oh yeah, the seal's at the back, it's going to go there. Flip the cap over this way. Have a look at the seal. Once again, the seal has to have the indentation and the higher edge or the lip back towards the inside of the motor to create that oil slinging transfer to work as a seal as the engine's revving against that cross hatch there that's in there. So. We've cleaned this, we've cleaned that. This one, we're probably not going to have to loop, and I'm going to try and put it in dry because uh, it's nice and clean, and I don't think uh, we're going to have too much issue with it. 
just just be gentle with it work it around into the channel work it around slowly 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 now the offset when we put that on was that way so let's just keep that in mind so we want to get that in normally people would loop up both sides there's not really any point to you because this one goes in easy there's no you're not fighting anything you don't really have to remove the crank you may as well leave it dry while I put anything there the only sealants we're going to need is against the ends because the ends aren't cut flush and there'll, there'll be a little bit of discrepancy there and they'll jam together and squish Alrighty. I just showed you how to put the seal into the cap dry what we're going to do now is just put a little bit of uh, RTV red just on the end here just a little drop like that and on the high side over here little drop like that now this is I'm a little bit a uh, little bit a uh, probably over overkill with my engine stuff but I like to just put a little bit here such a precision area it might not need it but what you don't want to do is put a brand new seal in there and for it to worm out the back of the uh, main cap so we'll put the cap nice and clean the bearings are lubed the bearing hasn't moved always just make sure the bearing hasn't moved from its seat it hasn't I've cleaned up the mating surface and the thrust surface that you're not going to see back inside the engine this back one I'm going to clean the back of that when it's sitting on the ground before I bolt a transmission on it Roll it over right here. Just gently line it up. Shift it down there and then down there. Okay, and there's a few different ways to positively engage this. I like to do it nice and slowly. These are pretty clean. Just gonna put a drop of thread off the right here. from the 15 16 home on ground support we're going to just finger torque these down now before the thread locker goes off just medium it's probably you don't really need it i like it just because they're oily old holes okay get it down to about home have a look at the register at the back of the block here. Yeah, just make sure that the cap's going in home. Square, which it is. So what I'm about. Fiberglass hammer, light tap, let's just seat this back home. Okay. That's back in. Checking that there's no tension on the bolts. Okay, now we've got to quickly get the bolts back out. So you can do one thing. They're a six point bolt and they're going to be a bit grippy. You're not going to get the correct torque reading on this head yet, right? So I'm going to leave that. So we'll come back later looking for our uh, main cap. Reading. It's going to be spot on. Okay. The cap's where it wants to be. Everything's lined up. Front to back, back and forth. Not too hard when you do hit them home because you want to get them both a bit sort of even. Okay. Just going to give them a bit of a pinch. Here's my nip, so I'm not looking too hard and too far with this torque wrench in the nip. It's just a pretty budget uh, torque wrench here, guys. Main cap bolts, 95. Now I'm going to show you a bit of a trick. When you run an extension like this, you get a little bit of deflection, it's going to throw it out. Plus, because this is a budget one, it's not going to be exactly spot on. But make sure when you're getting your readings, if you're on like a different side and you're getting newton meters or foot pounds you don't want to mix them up 
We're at foot pounds, we're looking for 95 to start with. So what we're going to do is set our gauge to 95. 95. Right there, we'll set our pin. I'm going to check something. With that going forward, we're going to go to another main. We're going to have a look how just how tight were the other mains. Now if I have to put pressure on here but, and this doesn't click before it moves, I'm going to know that this wasn't actually that tight and it felt like it wasn't. So we're just going to test something here. It's turning a little bit and then it clicked. So it is about 95. Moved like maybe 2 degrees. That didn't move at all. Just check this one. Now you're gonna lose through that extension there being a uh, four inch. You will lose a uh, five foot pounds. So we're actually checking at about 90 here. This will be a proper 95 once we need to pick up here. Check that, I'm not dropping the pump. Nine will be good enough. The reason for doing this is so the engine had loose mains from the factory, someone did them up with a lead grease. You don't want to just come home, assume that the readings on the internet 95 are going to be fine for that. You're going to crush the bearing too hard because I've just checked these and they're right at 95. If you really want to muck around, you could go to 100, but because one or two of them just moved a degree, I know that they're spot on. So we're gonna to go to 95 there. I'm just gonna check this last one. Okay. Now we lube the shoulder off that head just because it's a hex. They bend down, they grab on the cap a bit reading will be false. If you wipe everything off of there, go for it. Go for gold. Could be a bit loose, could be a bit tight. Right. Yeah, double click that. Okay, awesome, perfect. Right. Awesome. Right. Done. It's 90. Okay, we'll just set this up to 95 foot pounds now. We'll give it the last torque. Okay, nice. Done. Done. Okay, guys, that's just a uh, video there showing you guys how to do a rear main on a 351 Cleveland, 302 Cleveland would be the same, winds are a little bit different, basically the same principles, just watch out for the pin, that's the main thing. Thanks for watching guys, this one's done, I might make some videos later on showing you a few more things like um, installing a cam, checking end float, I'm not going to show you how to degree in a cam, putting this engine together because it's got timing gears that are only keyed in one way at dot to dot. But I will with one of my builds coming up. And um, thanks for watching, guys. Once again, I just want to remind you guys it's 43 degrees today, so I'm absolutely suffering. Please subscribe if you learnt anything. Appreciate you watching the video. Thanks.